Okay, go. Here it goes again. Let's talk once more about Duncan Keith, one of the 100 best NHL players to ever play the game, who is now old, overpaid, and not as good as he used to be on the Blackhawks, and how he has been in trade rumors in the past. We spoke a week ago about the Edmonton Oilers and how they were a team that was probably the number one frontrunner towards potentially landing Duncan Keith in a trade. And in all the rumors that we saw, we saw the potential of the Chicago Blackhawks maybe asking for Caleb Jones as a return because they would also want to acquire Seth Jones from Columbus and make that Jones-Jones reconnection over there in their squad, but... Ultimately, that has not happened at the time of recording this video. There's still no Duncan Keith trade, so he is still technically a Blackhawk. If you want to take a look at the numbers, we can go over that once more. Duncan Keith is 37 years old, 6'1", 192. He's a left-handed guy who is expiring in 2023, making $5.5 million a season. Yeah, it's a pretty big contract, and it was honestly kind of worth it back when he was getting 60, 40, 50 points in a season, but now he doesn't really do that anymore, and despite that fact, he is still on the trade block apparently, and we have not seen any trade get done so far, even though all the rumors said that Edmonton might be the front runners. Well, we had an update from Elliot Friedman the other day, and we're gonna read about it here in the July 10 edition of the Spectre's Hockey Rumor Mill. Let's go over onto the article and read what Elliot Friedman had to say. He reported that the Blackhawks and the Oilers are reaching a point of, does it happen or not, regarding a Duncan Keith trade. The Oilers have rejected most of what the Blackhawks sought in return, which may have included Ethan Bear and or Ryan McLeod. Frank Saravelli also had an update over here. He said the Blackhawks do not want to retain any portion of Duncan Keith's $5.53 million annual cap hit. Saravelli also says that the Oilers' interest has indeed waned. Waned is a fancy way of saying decreased. And the Oilers have also pulled back on the assets they were willing to send Chicago in return. Saravelli believes that Caleb Jones was a part of it, and he also said the Oilers have tabled a take-it-or-leave-it offer and there's only a certain price they will pay if the Blackhawks are not willing to retain salary. And you know what? When it comes down to this, I take a look at Stan Bowman and the Chicago Blackhawks. Firstly, all the criticism to the Blackhawks right now is warranted. Not just talking about the hockey operations, but all the stuff behind the scenes. If you hadn't seen what's going on with the Blackhawks and the entire allegations and whatnot, it is absolutely terrifying. And I'll go ahead and refer to you to read everything going on about that. But when it comes to the hockey operation side of things, this is honestly quite surprising to me. The Blackhawks going out there with an asset like Duncan Keith and saying, yeah, we don't want to retain any of this guy's salary. We want to be in a position to go out there and use as much money as we can to get any other guys that are available either via trade or free agency. And this 5.53 cap hit, man, it's coming off of our books, baby. The Blackhawks are honestly kind of delusional if they think they're not going to be able to get something done without retaining salary on Duncan Keith. This guy has already been in such a decline over the past few seasons that the way he has been trending, dude, he's not the same kind of guy. There is no team that's going to be willing to go out there in a flat cap world in 2021. We don't know if the cap is going to rise the entire rest of the time that Duncan Keith is going to have his contract going around. So what makes you think that any NHL team is going to go out there and try to get this guy on at full value? This is the new league we live in. It's not going to go down that way. And when it comes to the assets that the Oilers had to decline in this kind of idea, Elliot Friedman hinting towards it maybe being Ryan McLeod and Ethan Bear, oh boy, you're getting really ambitious with the assets that you're asking for, Chicago. Because, man, I don't know if you've been seeing it, but Ryan McLeod is a guy that the Oilers really, really like. McLeod's a guy that I like as well. I was a big fan of his older brother, Mike McLeod, when he was drafted by the Devils, but Ryan McLeod, also taken out of that Mississauga steelhead system, was also pretty good too. He was a gosh darn point per game player in the Swiss League this season at only 21 years old, so very good for him. 
but Ryan McLeod was fantastic with the AHL's Bakersfield Condors as well. And in the regular season, sure, he only had one point with the Oilers in 14 games played, both in the playoffs and in the regular season. But dude, Ryan McLeod was out there making a difference. And I remember very clearly taking a look at the games against the Vancouver Canucks and some of the games in the playoffs as well, and seeing what McLeod would go out there and attempt, this guy just has a swagger to his game. And the fact that he was taken as a second round pick in 2018 by the Oilers, he is seen as one of these picks of gold. Now, I don't want to say that he's going to be elite or whatever, but he is something that I think the Oilers do see a lot of value in developing. And it's why this is the kind of guy that you're not going to be able to pry away from Edmonton in a Duncan Keith trade, especially if you don't want to retain salary. They really like this guy. And Duncan Keith, to me, isn't seen as the kind of guy that the Oilers are striving to go out and try to get. The Oilers just happen to be one of the teams that Duncan Keith wants to go to. Does that not limit the amount of buying power and the amount of negotiating tactics that the Blackhawks could apply in this situation. The Oilers have the upper hand, and for Ken Holland to go out there and say, okay, you want this stuff, you want McLeod, you want Ethan Bear, whom we also like a heck of a lot here at Edmonton too, you want all this stuff for an asset that you're not willing to retain salary for, that we are just kind of only conversing about because he wants to come to us. No. We're not going to do that. And now we have the thing coming out from Sarah Bailey that the interest from the Oilers is waning. They were talking about it before, but apparently now they may not be as interested in it as they might appear to be today. So for all the rumors we had a week ago talking about Caleb Jones and the reuniting of Seth Jones and all that with the Chicago Blackhawks, it just appears that the Hawks and their overall management, they're just way too ambitious with this whole Duncan Keith thing. I think what they're trying to sell to Edmonton is the idea that Duncan Keith is still this maybe 30, 40 point NHL number one 30 minutes a night defenseman like he was five years ago when he was 32 years old. He's 37 now and he's got another extra two years on that contract. In a flat cap world where the cap is not going up, yeah, I'm sorry, Chicago, but it doesn't look like it's going to go down, especially if these are the assets that you're going to try to pry away. We already went into the entire report on Ryan McLeod, but Ethan Bear, don't get me wrong. Oilers fans love this guy, too. He's only 24 years old, so he still has a lot more room to develop. He was taken in the 2015 draft as a fifth-round pick. This is also one of these guys that the Oilers feel like they struck gold on. He had 21 points in 71 games with the Oilers in 2019-20. Sure, he didn't really produce that much this season, but who cares? He's got himself a really good profile, and Oilers fans love the heck out of this guy because of the way he plays. And if you're trying to get some fan favorites, organizational favorites, and guys that the Oilers just really like away for Duncan Keith, of all people, yeah, it's not going to go down, man. I'm sorry. Sorry, Duncan Keith is no longer that top 100 greatest NHL player to ever play the game, Duncan Keith. He's just the guy who's older and a little bit washed up now. Now, maybe me saying this will come back to bite me in the behind a year from now because maybe Duncan Keith comes back and he has himself another 50-point season. I don't know. But the way things are going right now, it's really easy to see why, for all intents and purposes, via Friedman and Sarah Bailey, this Oilers, Duncan Keith stuff may appear to not be going down anymore. Let's go back over to the Spectre's Hockey article from July 10th and read what Spectre had to say about this. Looks like the Oilers GM Ken Holland is taking a firm approach here. He is under no pressure to acquire Duncan Keith, and the Oilers could use a second left-pairing defenseman, but they can find more affordable options if the Hawks won't retain salary. There is also no indication the Hawks will take on someone like a James Neal or a Miko Koskinen for the purpose of buying them out. If the Blackhawks won't bend, this deal falls apart. So ultimately, Chicago, if you really want to get rid of Duncan Keith, you can't be playing by your own rules anymore, man. You gotta be doing stuff to willingly help out the team that you're sending Duncan Keith to, because this guy's no longer the top 100 NHL player of all time. He is honestly somewhat of a negative asset. And sure, he's not a bad hockey player per se. I mean, his advanced analytics aren't really the best, but he's still serviceable. It's just that contract makes him a negative asset. You can't be paying players on the back end who are as inconsequential as Duncan Keith is today $5.53 million for two more seasons, man. That's just not enough. 
So talk to me in the comments what you think about this entire video over here. Duncan Keith to the Oilers apparently may be falling apart. Some rejected trade ideas in there by the Oilers for Ryan McLeod, Ethan Bear. Talk to me in the comments what you think you enjoyed. This was Josh Rolls and I and I. And bye.